Greetings, my name is Mike and welcome to the video. So let's see how we can easily set up Dagger 2 to work with Android. Now Dagger 2, as you might know, is a dependency injection framework, which means that we're going to be relying on Dagger 2 to create our dependencies for us, to instantiate them. However, since Android um, tends to instantiate things itself, like activities, uh, it makes it a bit weird, so there's a little bit of extra setup, but once you've got it sorted, it's pretty easy to use. It'll be worth it in the end because it gets rid of a lot of factory logic and boilerplate code that sort of pollutes our, our code base. So let's see how we can get going. First of all, I just wanted to show you this app that I have that we're going to be updating to use Dagger. All that is, it's a list of uh, characters from a game called Dota 2, but you don't really need to know much about that. So we just fetch a list from the service and display it. But it's a simple app, but I want to show you how we can use Dagger 2 to inject all the various classes we have. Start off as usual by adding dependencies, because that's mostly how development goes. So in my uh, build.gradle, I'm going to add these various dagger dependencies. Um, there are five of them, which is quite hefty, but uh, what you're going to do, right? So I'm just going to paste those in there and sync the project. Also, be sure to check for the latest version um, whenever you're doing this, because obviously new versions are coming out all the time. Cool, the project is synced now, and the first thing we're going to go do in code is actually make sure we have a custom application class. Uh, you'll see why shortly. So I'm just going to create a new class, and then obviously it must extend the Android application class. And then be sure to add it in the manifest. Under the application tag, we set the name to that custom applications class. And then I'm also going to make it implement an interface as activity injector. This basically is some setup to say, hey, I want my activities to be able to have stuff injected into them. Cool, then we're going to implement that method shortly. And now we create a field annotated with inject. And in Kotlin, there'll be a late init var field. Um, and we're going to call it activity injector. And it's going to be a dispatching Android injector of type activity. And then in here, in this method that we created, we're just going to make it return the activity injector. Cool. And similarly, there's uh, interfaces here for fragments and broadcast managers and services and other things like that. But for this purpose, I'm only going to be doing activities. And then we need to go ahead and create an interface now, which I've called app component. And this we're going to annotate with at component. And this now must extend another interface, which is called Android in Injector. And this is going to be in here, the type of our application class, which is Heroes Application. Cool. And in here, we don't actually add any methods. So we can just take out the brackets like that. Then in here, I'm going to give it an annotation list of modules. I'll explain what these are shortly. But basically, for now, I'm just going to give it an Android Injection module. Just like that. I'll explain it just now, don't worry. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do a build. I'm not going to run it, but just it needs to compile because um, how it works is it generates code behind the scenes for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a build. And then when that's finished, I'm going to switch back to the application class. And I'm going to override the on, on create method. All right, the build's done. So in on create now, we can reference our dagger app component class, which is the name of your component class just prefixed with dagger. And then on there, we can go ahead and create that class. And then I want to inject this. So basically, this is going to construct an instance of this for us. And then you want to say, please inject this application class, which means it's just going to um, set this field to something which we didn't really have to care about. So just make sure you actually do this because otherwise nothing will work. <laughs> So next, I'm going to go ahead and actually implement all the stuff in our code. And this is the interesting part. This part was just the setup. And now we can actually go and do it for our screens. So I'm going to start off with an activity. I'll close the other tabs. We'll start off in an activity. And the thing that I want to inject here is the view model. As you can see at the moment, I'm saying view model, uh, using a view model factory and getting a new instance. I want to get rid of that because factories are so last year, right? So what we can do here is we can make it a inject field. And then we can we need to take out private because you can't inject private members. That means that okay, Dag is going to set this field for us now by itself. So I can take out the the factory method usage there. And then in on create, before I call super dot on create, I need to say Android injection dot inject this. 
And that is the method call that will actually tell it to go and set your injection um, fields here for you. If you forget to do this, um, your app will likely crash with a null pointer because the fields won't have been set yet. Next up, we need to actually create a new um, class. And I'm, this is the first time you're going to hear me say this, but I'm going to make a Java class here because it actually, I think, looks a bit better than a Kotlin one. Um, don't worry about that, but I'm going to create an abstract class and I'm going to annotate it with module. Now here is uh, where I said I'll get back to modules. A module is basically a class that tells Dagger how to create various dependencies. That's basically all that a module is. So I'm going to go and actually switch back to the component class, the interface, and I'm going to add our new uh, modules module over here. Um, oh yeah, the component class is basically a thing that um, binds all the different modules together. Because the awesome part about Dagger 2 is that it's it happens at compile time, meaning it checks if all your dependencies are satisfied at compile time and your build will fail if you don't have a dependency that's met. Which is good because it allows you to pick up um, possible failures earlier, right? Instead of at runtime, you'll pick it up at build time, which is, I think, a, a pretty good thing. Anyway, I'm going to switch back to our module and in here, I'm just going to create an abstract method. Um, which is going to have the return type of our activity. Now just <laughs> hold on, this sounds a bit weird, but this is just how it is. So I'm going to create an abstract method and I'm going to annotate it with at contributes, con if I can spell correctly. <laughs> so this is basically telling Dagger to, hey, I want to be able to inject stuff into this activity and then it's going to go and generate some code behind the scenes. So that's basically what this method does with this specific annotation. Cool, that's basically all you need to know. Cool, and with that set up, our activity is now injectable, meaning that any fields you annotate with add inject, Dagger will try to provide for you. But now you'll notice if I try and build, we'll get a failure because we haven't told Dagger how to create this view model class. So let's just wait a bit and see the logs. Just, uh, there we go, I'll scroll up a bit. And it says here, the view model cannot be provided without an inject constructor or provides method. What that basically means is Dagger is saying, I don't know how to create this thing that you want me to create. <laughs> so the simplest way we can get around it is to go to that view model class and give it an at inject constructor. This basically tells Dagger, hey, if you want an instance of the view model, you can use this constructor that I've annotated with at inject. Cool. Now if I try to build though, it's going to complain because I have a constructor parameter here, the repository, but it doesn't know how to create the repository. So again, it's going to fail, but with a different error now that says repository cannot be provided with the provides method. Cool. So now what we're going to do here, it's a little bit different. We can't just annotate this constructor because it's an interface, right? Programming against interfaces is good, but that's another conversation. So basically, I'm going to go to my uh, module class again here. And here we can say, remember it said it needs an at provides method. So I'm going to annotate a method with provide. I make it static because I'm going to actually write a body for this method. And the return type is the thing that we want to provide, which is the repository. So it's going to uh, have a return type of that interface. And I'm just going to call it provide repo. The method names don't really matter. It's just for your own um, clarity. And here I want to say return new hero repository implementation. Cool. But Oh no, it's, there's a problem because this repository also needs another class. It needs an instance of an open Dota service, which again, that's an interface. So cool thing is that in this method here, we can take in other dependencies that are provided by Dagger. So I can say I want an open Dota service here, and then I can just pass it in here. And then Dagger will, will try to resolve this for us and then construct it like normal. But once again, since I haven't provided open Dota service anywhere, the build will fail. As you can see here, if I go up a bit, it says open Dota service cannot be provided, blah, blah, blah. And that's as expected. So let's see how we can fix this. I'm going to go to the service factory that I had um, from my bad implementation. And then I'm just going to end up copying a lot of this stuff. And I'm going to add another method in the module that tells it how to provide the open Dota service. All right, now I've got it set up so that it knows how to construct an open Dota service object, which will then get passed into here to create the repo, which will then get passed into the view model, and then hopefully it should build fine now. So let's let's give it a try. And wait for it. Build successful, awesome. That means all the dependencies are correctly set up so that 
we know now at runtime that the app is not going to blow up because we're missing something. So what I can actually go and do now is delete all these three factories that I had because we don't need them anymore. Cool, let's actually run the app and just make sure we don't get any crashes. And there we go, everything works fine, the app still starts up. Um, no null pointers or anything, so we know, cool, everything is working. And that's basically all there is, that's how easy Dagger is to set up and to actually use. But now just for interest sake, I want to show you a bit of a way how I can neaten up this a bit. So this method that we, where we provide the repository, all that we're doing is saying return new repository and giving it a dependency. So we can actually simplify this by creating an abstract method which returns the repository um, interface. And I'm just going to say bind repo. And then inside the parameters we give it the implementation class, which is a hero repository implementation. And then give it a, a binds annotation. And I can comment this out because it, this is basically the same thing. It just looks a bit neater and it's a bit less code. Now what this is saying to Dagger is whenever someone wants a hero repository instance, go and create the hero repository implementation. Cool. But now this will fail if I try to build because this class doesn't have an inject constructor. So let me just go and add that quickly and import that and import that class. And then since we already have provided an open Dota service thing in our module, we'll be able to run the app fine without any issues. All right, running the app and cool, builds and runs fine, no problem. And I think it does look a bit better to just have this sort of one line abstract method. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Now, unfortunately for the retrofit stuff here, it's a bit more complex. We don't just say new something something. So we can't really simplify it much more than this. But what we can do is we can say this is a, a singleton. And I must also go and annotate my app component with singleton. If I can spell properly. And now, as you may have guessed, this annotation tells us that this thing must be a singleton, meaning it's only created once. So whenever we now get an open Dota service injected anywhere in the app, it'll be the same instance, which which can be very useful depending on what uh, what the class is. For example, if it's a, like a cache or something that you only want one instance of, you can do this. But my advice is to just be very careful when using this annotation. Just read up on it and make sure you know what it's doing because um, people can still go and construct an open Dota service manually and you'll have multiple instances. Um, so just please be very careful when using the singleton annotation. You need to know what it's doing. But yeah, I think that's all I've got actually. I just wanted to show off um, how you can easily set up Dagger on Android and how to implement it in a simple sort of activity flow. So I hope that people don't get discouraged by Dagger 2. I hear a lot of stuff going around where that it's oh, so complex and difficult to understand. But it's really not that bad. If you start working with simple stuff like this and then learn the more advanced stuff slowly, it's actually really awesome to use. I've been using it at work for a few years now and it's, it's made life a lot easier because you don't have to write all these disgusting factory classes and factory methods and, and convenience everything. You can just say, I want this one constructor for my class. This is what the class needs to use. And then Dagger takes care of the rest for you, which I think is pretty awesome and it neatens up our code quite a lot. But yeah, sorry, I've been going on for, for quite a while with this. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. Please leave comments or stuff if you have questions. I'm happy to help out where I can. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and cheers for now.